Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Sunday Night Breakdown. Daniel Routledge and Dave Forrester with you to uh, look back what was the action this week. We could have had a week off, Dave. It's supposed to be an international week. We could have... That's another <laughs> argument, isn't it? <laughs> That's another conversation. Yeah, yeah. We, could we won't. Have. We won't go. We won't go down that route just yet. But there, there were a yeah. few games, so we will. Uh, we will look at the um, the GB games as well, um, and uh, we'll take it in chronological order rather than order of importance. Um, and we'll start with Wednesday night with the with the Lions. This was an important game. Lions uh, women's team away. Uh, against uh, Jabne Berno, um, and they were beaten 68-41. And full disclosure, I was going to watch this on Friday evening when I got to Newcastle, but the traffic was abysmal, so I got there late. So I watched it this morning, and after the first quarter, I turned it off because the game was over at that point. I reckon we probably got 20 wins from the A1 on a Friday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I reckon, you know, you know, good move. Yeah, it wasn't great. Yeah. Um, like it, obviously, Winterburn wasn't playing, mm. uh, and that's a, a, a loss from their kind of their shot creation capabilities. And the um, the Czech team are good, you know. They got every, you know, they were the best team I thought in the, in the home games at London. The best of the three teams they played against. They got excellent size. They have um, an American girl whose name I can't remember. I'm afraid, sorry. Um, who gives them athleticism on the perimeter? And they're just very, very well drilled and defensively in particular. And it's just different for, for London. They're coming out, they're, they're beating teams by 40 and 50 at home. There's nobody with the size and the um, capabilities of the teams that they're playing defensively more than anything else. So the shots that you're getting easily at home aren't there. So when Leonard comes yeah. off the screen, you know, um, there's, a, there's a six foot four last there's another six foot four um, player, you know, with hands in the passing lanes, and um, they, they didn't adjust very well. And, and you know, they, basically the game was done after about eight minutes. Yeah, they were they were fifteen two down after uh, after eight minutes. Um, the the and the score they got was a mistake. It was a, an overcooked pass on the inbound that Leadham just ran down and and and, yeah. and ran in a layup. Turnovers as well they had. I mean, they they blew a couple of layups close yeah. in but it almost got to sort of scoreboard pressure and they were turning it over and yeah and, and as i say it's when it's, it's difficult when it's, you can't just throw it into a zania if you're zania mm. turn over and shoot over somebody off from yeah. eight from six feet which is what they've been able to do when they're under pressure so whenever leonard or um breen or beckford norton have been pressured they know they've got that target inside who's able to score at bbl level it's harder, you know, the, the shots she got were harder, they were more challenged, they were slightly out of the normal spots. And really, the, the only time they put any form of offensive run together was when they cleared out for Beckford Norton mm. in, in the second quarter. And they just, and she just, she, the one, the one advantage to use coach speak that the, um, that the Lions had in that game offensively was the fact that no one could stay in front of Beckford Norton. Mm -hmm. And um, probably she got three or four layups off that, but then they got wise to that. And obviously there's a way of defending that with a second defender. And then she gets out of control a little bit. Um, but yeah, it was, yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't a competitive game, unfortunately. No. 23-5 after the first quarter and then nothing really uh, much happened after that. Beckford Norton was the only player in double figures with... Uh, 13. They were 18 of 73 shooting, which is uh, under 25%. Uh, three of 20 from three-point line uh, lines. What I will say is it's, it's the next kind of evolution in Leonard's game, you know, to be to see that she's not able to get the shots for everybody else, that she's getting everywhere else in the league. And to, to think, well, actually, I'm going to have to be the one who's going to have to come out here and score mm. um, because no one else is doing it. And I don't think she's quite... She's still a pass-first point guard. Mm. And I think the next evolution in her game is to have that switch whereby she can say, oh, I've, I've had enough of this. You know, you've... Flanoy once told me that, you know, playing, the one thing he liked about playing with TJ Walker was that, you know, TJ would give everybody a chance to shoot the ball. And then if they weren't, if they weren't doing what they were meant to do, TJ would just say, oh, all right, it's me. Mm. You know, yeah. just like that, you know. And if someone wasn't playing defence, TJ wouldn't throw on the ball. You know, and that, that type of thing. You'd control the game to that level. Uh, and... Um, you know, and that's probably the very the next step for Kennedy Leonard. But it's, it's tough. I mean, you know, they, they weren't in, they weren't able to score the ball the way they've been scoring the ball again in the, in the WBBL. And by the time you adjust to that, you're 25 down with half time, and the game's done. Yeah. 
So in the other game in this group, Kelton uh, lost at home 68-86 to uh, Casters. The last game that uh, Lions play is uh, away against Casters. They obviously beat them by six at home. Casters are four and one. That's their only defeat. Um, Bruno are three and two, and the Lions are two and three. If the Lions win, they will qualify. If they lose, they can still qualify, but it gets into the maths of it all. And I would recommend you just go and read um, Bradley Gaines' piece on, on Hoops Fix because that will explain it much clearer than I can do uh, now. Are you recommending but, that to me? Having... I'm recommending it to everybody. I, I'm, yeah. see, I'm not going to do and read that. I'm going to wait to see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but if, you, if anybody listening wants to know what's going to happen or could happen, uh, Brad's yeah. done a really good piece on it. So go check that out. No, Brad. Sorry, let's, I don't disrespect your work, but you know it's just just one detail too far from me. My head's gone. Let's go to Thursday night and the uh, World Cup qualifier in Newcastle, uh, where Great Britain beat Greece seventy-eight to sixty-nine, a first win over Greece since nineteen eighty-four. Um, no Hessen and no Soko for um, for Great Britain. Challenges around getting them in and out of Japan. I understand Jordan Williams. Uh, with his first cap, Bigby, Bigby Williams was back for the first time in four years, and Anderson was in there as well. Um, Greece obviously significantly impacted. I didn't watch his game live. I was compensating on Panathinaikos. That will tell you how significant uh, they were uh, affected. Olympiakos were playing the next day in yeah. the Euroleague. Nick Kalathis, it turns out he had a broken leg. It was announced the next day, and he's out for six weeks but he would have been playing with Barcelona on Friday if he was fit. They've got two Antetokounmpo's in the NBA. They've got another Antetokounmpo at uh, Asvel. There was yeah. a lot of top-level Greek players who weren't there. Yeah, That's the caveat to it all. Um, but uh, let's, let, let's get into the game. And you've got Agravanis, who plays for Patras, who are in the Euro Cup, and the Euro Cup had stopped. And Kavadis, who plays for Peristeri in FIBA Europe Cup, Europe up um and those two got greece off to a good start jumped them out to to, to a five-point lead yeah greece expected to win this game um if you listen to the interviews that the greek players did afterwards and um, they were unimpressed with the fact that they lost mm. um and so yeah I, I get that they were missing missing players i don't know i struggle i mean i, I don't know but i they may be as important as Hessen and Soko. Mm. I, I struggle given the comparative depths of talent in the two countries. Well, this to, is the point to, I, to, to, I, to, to I think was that they making. are more significant than, yeah. than, than Hessen and Soko because Hessen and Soko are playing 60 minutes for us. Yeah, yeah, back, yeah. You know, and um, unless you obviously Janice, yeah, right, but yeah. you know, and he had, I get that, but even then. The, the the level of depth of, of a player is is such that you know we, we we have a big hole there to fill as well. The the reality is as I mean they could they, they could probably put out a different twelve which would be better than the one that they that they did put out Greece. But the reality is the team they put out still had a number of players who were playing in the various different European competitions, and and that's something that we are not blessed with in terms of our depth. No, and. Um, it's kind of intriguing because it, it's kind of turned the tables a little bit because if you go back to kind of the last time we had any meaningful success, and we probably haven't never had a run since 2006 along the lines of the one we've got at the moment, probably never. Um, but, you know, if you go back to pre-Olympics in, in 2010, 2011, we built up the Olympics, mm. At that point, it was all about us having Deng and Pops and and, and and I was kind of our court marks, our stars, as it were, as kind of lifting the level and, and us struggling when we're coming up against more cohesive and uh, and more together European units when we're kind of bringing stars in from around. And now it's all twisted, it's all turned, because mm -hmm. our success now is based upon a, the um, fortitude of an incredibly together, tight-knit bunch of players and coaches and who are playing above, and I don't mean this in a disrespectful way to them, playing above at their level mm. that, they, that, that they're currently at in their professional careers, mm. be it 
um, you know, Ashley Hamilton coming in, playing, playing in lead gold at the moment, uh, coming in and, and making significant impact in the game. Um, Joe Williams at London Lions, um, all those guys, I'm, I'm just picking names there, but all of them, mm. you know, increase in their part because they're part of it. And Teddy Okrafor, obviously, is the obvious one. Um, so that's really that's really nice because that's how you build it. That's how you build a program, an international program. That's how Argentina did it. They did it with all these talented players, but they did it with a group. Yeah, a, a tight knit group. And Argentina became the world champions. Now I appreciate we're not going to we haven't got to nobody around the corner. Went our school, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But nevertheless, they overachieved because of what they had and because they had a, a, a culture which was um, committed to their country, and. We are getting there with that, and and that, that and, and we and believe me, our guys have had a significant, a lot more adversity than basically any other. Yeah, in, true. In that yeah, situation, yeah. and that adversity can go one way; it can go the other way. You can you, you can you know you can throw your hands up in disgust and say not pot noodles again, and yeah. uh, uh, you know, and, and say that's it. Or you can come together and you can decide that you know we're here for a reason we don't have to be here you can opt out if you want you're not getting paid to be there you know you might not get off the bench because it's a 12-man group but we're still going to be there and we're still going to play hard so on an overall basis you know it's the most encouraging men's program i think we've ever had mm. ever had mm. um because there's an element of sustainability to it at mm. this point in time. Um, and guys are playing above you know above and beyond and doing an unbelievable job. So that said, that's that's kind of the the, the, the preface to the game. Um, further preface to the game, um, I'm going to give my guys a, a shout out here. The guys at the arena and the guys at Newcastle did an unbelievable yeah, job. Yeah. This was basically their game. There was yeah. nothing. There was it was basically left to, to Paul and Dan Black and all those guys to to kind of put the teams in hotels, put the officials up, you know, get the sponsors, get the advertising boards, get. Everything so sort of get the media sell thing two and a half thousand tickets, sell two and a half thousand tickets on a Thursday night at 6 30 yeah. on school night, yeah. yeah, you know, do all of that. And to get there, and the arena looked great. And it, even because we're two years on from where we were when they played Germany, and we we're pandemic on all that stuff, but the arena looked great, it looked like an event, it looked like an event. So, I'm, so I'm going to give those guys a shout out now because sometimes I don't do that enough because I'm biased. Um, beyond that, um, the game was great. I thought it was a really, really well played game. Um, I thought both teams, you know, it was, it was, even when they played Germany, the last game I saw, the Germans obviously didn't need to win because they were already qualified. Mm. So there was an edge to it, but there wasn't quite an edge to it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. The Greeks were different. Greeks different. Greeks, the Greek teams not going to lose a game to to GB. It's not good, you know. There's the um, 80, 1984, you said, mm. and they came out and they were very, very efficient early on. They scored the ball. They got where they wanted. Their starting five was really impressive. But so too was ours, and we were able to score as well to kind of not get blown out of the gym in the first five minutes. Mm. And when I say we're able to score, it's because, you know, Olaseni is, is just a Trojan. He's, he's an absolute warrior and doesn't say much, doesn't, you know, isn't a big character. But, um, you know, the, what he puts in for, for, for Great Britain is, is, is beyond compare, really. Um, and Dan Clark as well, obviously, Dan Clark is Dan Clark. But just to see that we were able to, um, with Teddy starting, with Ben Mock, with Ben Mockford starting, with Luke Nelson starting, we were able to get the shots we wanted. We played with confidence. We played with aggression. And the most important thing in a game like that is that you know you make sure the Greeks know that they're in a game, mm. um, and that happened. So you know Mockford made his three. Um, Nelson made one early, and um, Olaseni was was able to finish at the rim, etc. But defensively, it was kind of a struggle. Then we went to our rotations, and, and, and the advantage that we had in that game that we didn't have tonight was that you were able to bring Tariq Phillip off the bench. Mm. Um, and in this game, in our kind of forward rotation, Ashley Hamilton was exceptional. You know, he took the fight. Mm. And he, he made the game into what we needed it to be, which was an aggressive kind of fronting up type of game, you know, and, and he, he scored a couple of, a couple in transition, got an offensive yeah. rebound, whatever. And um, suddenly, you know, the, it's a game of runs and, and the spirits are going back and forwards. Well, he had, he, he had uh, sparked, him and Teddy, eight o run around the first break. It was 27-23 uh, and it was pretty tight for the rest of the half. Agravanis um, put Greece five up at half time, And then you come out into the second half and Nikos Gikas, 
knocks down a couple of threes early in the third quarter and he, yeah. he goes out to 15. And, and I suppose this is the point that where you really test that sort of cohesiveness, that group mentality, because that game can go there. You're down 15, you know, that can go. But 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 Great Britain showed tremendous fight to come back into the game. Um, Again, it was Hamilton it, as well and, and Nelson with five points that stopped the bleeding initially and, and just sort of got them back on an even keel. Yeah, I thought at the end of the second quarter, we we our um, starting five struggled. We had our starting five back on the court and we were struggling a little bit because this was a game whereby the Greeks were better when they were moving the basketball screen, rolling in space in the floor, that they were a tough cover. And um, that kind of made it difficult to, for us to be effective defensively with Dan Clark and Gabe Olesen on court at the same time. Because Dan Clark is starting four, but he also plays quite a substantial amount of his minutes at the five, depending on the other guys. And at the beginning of the third quarter, we got run off the court mm. with that, that, that degree of quickness. We had three, our two bigs. And, um, you know, as I said, they made a couple of threes. Um, they got, they got, they just played with a bit, but they were good threes. They were threes off kickouts. They were threes off swing passes. They were, they, they just looked in rhythm. And and we called a timeout and um, credit to Mark on this call that he, he immediately went small and that was the end of it. There was no more big line up the whole game, mm. you know? So from 15 points down, whatever the run is at that point, and I'm probably thinking it's a, you know, a plus 25 in the next 18 minutes, mm. um, we didn't have more than one big on the court. You know, Cavell Baby Williams didn't come back on the court. It was either Gable or Senor Dan Clark playing the five, and it was either Ashley Hamilton or Jordan Williams playing the four. And that made a massive difference to the team because it meant that we could defend, we could scramble, we could get out. And there's always a tight, you know, you start games big and you finish games small. It happens so often. There's all and, and that kind of point forced their arm. And from that point on, you know, yes, we made some shots in the third quarter, but they got back with their defense. They didn't get back with their offense, they got back with their defense. And um, and then Teddy kind of Teddy decided, took over, yeah. It's my fiftieth cap. I played in Greece. They don't think I can shoot because they said so afterwards. They didn't say it by name, but they said non some non shooters. Some guys were not very good shooters. Made shots. Well, you know, Teddy can shoot. He just doesn't shoot. There's a difference, mm. you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm looking, and I went back and checked out who made shots, and it's like Luke Nelson. Okay, well, you're not leaving him open. Um, ben Rockford, you're not leaving him open. And, and I don't know what Tariq's numbers are, but I'm pretty sure you're not really leaving him open much either mm. uh, in, in, as a three-point shooter. So the, the only guy they're talking about is Teddy. Yeah. But if you give a guy wide open threes, who's a, a guard in European basketball, you have to expect him to knock them down. So I thought they yeah. got a little bit um, too cute for themselves on that. Uh, and um, Teddy's game and his defense and his help side defense and his... It, 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 it's 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 kind of a weird. Um, you have to you have to watch it to see, but I've seen enough games now to see. Teddy starts off the basketball game as a point guard and kind of kind of controls the tempo of the game and often sometimes over dribbles a little bit, but the, but try gets the team into what they're meant to, meaning to run. As the game goes on with GB, Luke Nelson becomes a point guard. Luke Nelson has the ball. Tariq Phillip and Luke Nelson have the ball in their hands more. Mm. And Teddy kind of, because the games are more of a flow, so there's more, so the guys are more used to what they're doing. And at that point, Teddy becomes an off the ball shooter. Now, if he's going to stand there and knock him down, he's playable. If he's not going to stand there and knock him down, it's difficult to have him on the court mm. because he's not, he's not in, influencing the game that way. So in previous games where he started GB games and not finished it, that's kind of why. But in this game, he made sure that there's no way in the world Mark was going to take him off the court yeah. because not only did he knock down shots, he made every single play that you needed to make in the basketball game. So then they get to the point with um, two minutes to go in the third quarter and um, we're right back in the game. I think we've come back to about five. And at that point, um, Ashley Hampton is tired. And I think Ashley Hampton picks up his third foul and you look down the bench and Mark brings in Jordan Week. Could have, brought, could have come back with Dan Clark because Dan Clark had been sitting for a while and gone back to that big lineup. But this is this is a difference with international basketball. In international basketball, you have eleven guys who can all play. Yeah, I never had that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. that level, right? So you can look at a guy who's not who's the third guy on the depth chart at the power forward spot with you and Clark Hamilton. The third guy is Jordan Williams, first cap. But you can look, well, well, Jordan can play, right? Okay, boom, I'll put him on the bench. I'm not going to go back to a, syst a system that isn't working. I'm going to find the right type of player to win the game the way that we need to play. And that 
That's why you've got a bench of 12 guys who can play. Mm -hmm. So you bring in Jordan Williams. And Jordan, again, rises to the occasion as well. Mm -hmm. A little bit iffy to start with, a little bit nervous, but you, you haven't been in the game for 28 minutes. That's going to happen. But he played. And, and Greece, and Greece fell into this with both Ashley Hamilton and Jordan Williams. They say a little six foot six guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Both yeah. of them. Yeah. And, and Greece are, are, are and the Greece are thinking the Greek big guys are thinking okay or not even big yeah. guys not even six yeah. seven eight. okay I got size on him give me the ball dribble 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 pound it pound it pound it and you're not going to move Jordan and you and you yeah. didn't didn't move Ashley much either to be fair yeah. and what that does isn't it isn't just that it's ineffective it takes them out of everything that they were doing in relation to space and the floor driving and kicking moving the ball and beating us with the quickness they see that as a natural adjustment because they think. Um, little guy, okay, they're going quicker. They're going to be able to stop our ball movement. We'll go down and we'll, we'll beat them inside. Well, the best thing in basketball to have is a six foot six guy who plays like he's six nine mm. or a six foot four guy who plays like he's six seven because they're quick enough to defend six seven guys, but they're also um, strong enough to defend the bigger guys. Mm. And that defensively, you know. Both Ashley Hamilton and Jordan Williams were utterly key to this basketball game because yeah. they defended those spots uh, and they defended it positively. And that then means that all the other Greek guys are thinking, well, hang on, Mike, he's just driven the ball four times and throwing it up. Yeah. Yeah. And it's my turn. And, and suddenly they get a little bit antsy and suddenly the three stop dropping. Yeah. So that, that's the first thing. So that was a great, you know, that, that was the confidence to have the confidence in Jordan and his first cap to play uh, and for him to, to come in and, and impact the game that way. Um, not offensively as you might have thought he would, but defensively, that was a massive key in this game. And then we get to the um, the fourth quarter, and as I say, then it be, kind of becomes um, the Luke Nelson kind of takes over a little bit yeah. as well. Let me just do the other bit before that. So um, Teddy hits three threes to finish the third quarter, and then one to start the uh, fourth quarter. Yeah, so, right the, that was a big yeah. shot. I got. I was. I was at my chair for that. One. <laughs> that that was a thirteen-three run and, and put Great Britain back in front, sixty-one fifty-seven. And the difference of playing in front, particularly at home, yeah. in the last eight nine minutes of a game versus chasing it is pretty huge. Um, and then um, Michaelis Luntis, who I should point out does play for Olympiacos, but he's only played nine minutes in the Euroleague all season. So I'm assuming that's why he was allowed to. Uh, <laughs> Come to, he was released to come to this game. He makes a three to cut it to to a one point game, and then we're getting to the point where where you're talking about where Nelson hits a three. I think Philip hit, 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 hits a three. Uh, Williams dunk, Phillips dunk, and and GB are just absolutely rolling at this point. Well, they're rolling defensively, and, and they played in the fourth quarter. And, and again, Ashley Hamilton got a kind of a dubious fifth foul. Which meant Jordan Williams came back in again, you know, again. And, and you actually look, um, I think, and Dan Clark went out and gave all the send, he came back in. And there's actually a lovely clip about four minutes to go in the game on the BBC coverage where you actually catch Mark Stuttle talking to Dan Clark. And I would bet, and I don't know, but I would bet just by the way the conversation, just it was only a couple of seconds that Dan Clark saying, No, oh, leave him. Mm. I don't need to go in, leave him. It's going, leave Jordan Williams, it's going. Mm. It's, it, it's right, you know, yeah. and it's because of their defense, because their defense, they were, they were absolutely three or four times down. They were helping each other. And Teddy's help is a starting point because Teddy's a, Teddy is a really impressive baseline help defender. He's actually, you know, he's a solid on ball defender. But when he, when they're running those middle screen and rules and he's a guy defending the guy in the corner, he's exceptional at getting across wherever, if the ball's on the opposite side or the ball's coming down the middle and impacting the shot or the, the catch or whatever. A couple of times, digs down, gets steals, one time got a block shot. Um, and him doing that then means that the next person has a rotation to make and the next person has a rotation to make. And the Greeks are flinging the ball around and all our guys, it's next guy, next guy, next guy. And the rotations throughout three, and it was right in front of me. So I was watching it, you know, so you could see it right there. Um, rotations were great and that's what did them because then they end up shooting threes which aren't quite rhythm threes which are kind of off balance because they didn't have any real shot makers the guys who can we'll get back to this again the yeah, guys yeah. who can make shots but they didn't have any real shot makers there were the couple that they made went off the glass so give me a break you know and um the defense then led as you say Tariq got what teddy got a steal they got they got the alley-oop kind of 
the, the mm. pass and pass back. Um, Luke Nelson, um, and then Luke Nelson took over, and you say Jordan Williams got a dunk, that was off yeah. Luke Nelson's pass. Um, then I think um, Gabe Olusenny got fouled, that was off a Luke Nelson pass, you know, and at that point, that's open because suddenly they've got to guard Teddy. Mm. And if Teddy hasn't made those shots earlier on, those, you know, they're not looking, they're not looking at Jordan Williams, they're not looking at all of a sudden in the minute they're all going to be in there, they're going to be seeing throw it out to Okra for. So it's kind of it was it was it was a wonderful kind of example of how the game twists and turns depending upon the way that players play. Mm. And I'm still afterwards said, Oh, it's, you know, people say it's like a chess match. I, I think it's a bit more like a whack-a-mole. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whereby you know you, you 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 you've got to knock one guy out, but as soon as you knock yeah. one guy out, someone else is going to step up. Yeah, yeah. The reaction has a reaction. So Teddy makes some shots, which means that Gabe. It means that Luke Nelson is now uh, got more freedom to make passes, and that uh, uh, that and their defense um, was 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 awesome. And it started off. It started off a little bit kind of. There's a few people in there. I'm not sure who knew that much about what was going on, mm. and it started off a bit. You know, a bit kind of. You know, hummy and kind of. Mm. You know, snooker, snooker crowdy, if I can put it that way. But by the by, the third quarter and the fourth quarter, you know, you know, the, the thing with the place was was really quite loud, and I think there was a. I would hope, whilst it's not Istanbul, there was a you know a definitive um, home advantage gained. Um, from that, and they, they, certainly the guys looked very comfortable being there. Mm-hmm. But the, the pleasing thing was that, yeah, it was it was our guys. It was it was it was our BBL guys. It was Teddy, yeah. it was actually, yeah. it was Jordan. They had significant impacts on that game. And yeah, they might only be playing against guys who are playing some guys who are European players or who are. Uh, it's European still players. the most. Okay, the so team, playing Greece A one. Yeah, yeah. But yeah most still, of the team is Pat Tras, Paris Derry, those sorts of teams. It's not like they're playing. You know, they've never heard of. Exactly. These are, you know, these are still proper, proper yeah. players, you know, yeah. proper high, high level basketball every week. And they, not only did they impact the game, um, you know, we ended up in a situation where, you know, Mark's able to have Jordan Williams with his first cap on the court and Dan Clark with 110 caps on the bench to mm. clear out a game that we have to win. Mm. Uh, and, you know, and that was um, really, really pleasing. Um, because it, it goes to our depth, and, and, and Jordan Williams and Ashley, well, Ashley might have been there, but Jordan Williams probably not there if if Miles Heston and Obi Soko were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know yeah. that's the reality of it. Yeah. And um, well, so he we, wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't in the original twenty-four, was he? You know, that's another story, isn't it? I mean, how you can have anybody not in the twenty-four and then pick for the twelve? That suggests some form of organisational dysfunction. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not precisely sure what that organisational dysfunction is, but you know that is just nuts. Um, but to be honest, I don't look at the twenty fours anymore. No, I don't. I don't. You know, I, I don't really think. I think they're. I don't know if it's a rule that we've got to put them out there, or it just. I don't know if FIBA say you've got to name a, a squad out in advance, but I, I don't suppose they do because then Jordan wouldn't have been able to play. Um, so it just seems to me it's just kind of you know put a pin in the a pin in the British players around the world. Mm. The other thing is a note for um, Tariq Philip. You know he. Played with my boy Jason Page, Jason Page at West Virginia, mm. you know, and and we were always thinking, well, could we not have got the guy with the British passport as well? Yeah, you yeah. know, <laughs> he was a bit, um, you know, but that British passport was take, taking them some places, and um, you know, he um, for for a guy who I think he's a British mother, but for a guy who is you know basically an American, he is bought into that that absolutely you know hundred percent, and mm. you know, and bought into a role. You know, he's playing. I think he's playing Euro Cup in Turkey, or he's certainly playing in, in Turkey at a high level. But he's coming yeah. off the bench, you know. There's no issues. He's clear, you know, he's clearly bought into it all. Um, so everything about that game, I thought, was 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 perfect. Um, it was a real event, apart from everything that went on around the game, which I yeah, think was perfect, yeah, yeah. I'm afraid. So, so the twelve zero run had put GB thirteen up seventy three sixty with with four and a half to play, and, and actually it was pretty comfortable the last four and a half minutes. It, it, it was. They it didn't had the tension, stuff. I suppose. Uh, I suppose because I'm doing, um, because I was doing Euroleague at the time, I'm watching it back, knowing the final score. Mm. But it, but it, I didn't feel the tension in the last four and a half minutes. Maybe you did in the building. Not really. The only time I felt a little bit of tension was when we were up about. Six with 30 seconds to go, mm. and how I decided to get the crowd to stand on their feet to celebrate the win. Yeah, 
you know, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, I, yeah. I, I know, well, it's Euro basket, Euro, European basketball, yeah, it's too yeah, early, you know, it's not the, yeah, they're not yeah, dribbling, yeah. this ball's not getting dribbled out and someone's no. took the crap three and we're all going home. This yeah. game is going to last for a while. And they made a quick layup and credit to Mark. I don't know if he felt it too or if it was just because he was playing, he was coaching the game. An immediate timeout and everybody sat down again, yeah. helpfully. Yeah. Um, because that game was going to the end, but even then, yeah. you know, we were six down, six up with thirty seconds to go. We won by nine. Yeah, yep. nine. Could, that could yeah. make a difference. Yeah, could, 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 could. So you know, the the, the game itself, I thought was um, was played. Um, ex- the, the guys played great. Um, I thought we coached great. I thought to come back from fifteen down at that run at the end of the beginning of the third quarter. Yeah. Um, against a team that's expecting to beat you and to then basically go plus 25 the rest of the way yeah, yeah. without your co-captain in Miles Hessen, without probably the most explosive player in Ovi Soko. Um, and those guys have been part of that group and, and do kind of raise the ceiling of that group. And to do it the way they did by digging in, playing defence and everybody stepping up and, and kind of being bought into it. I thought it was awesome. Mm. You know, you know, some, some games you win a certain way and yet you walk away, yeah, we won. Some games you win and you think, actually, there's some we got something going here. And, mm-hmm. and there's going to be a point, and it maybe reach that point th- this evening, whereby you know you can't overcome the, the talent yeah. differential. You know, there's, yeah, there's yeah. always going to be that point. You know, if they produce you know three hundred decumpos, you know, you yeah. can't, but you can still do things the right way to give yourself the very, very best chance. And I thought we did. And that's where the problems come because whilst the guys on the court are doing the right thing to give themselves the best chance. They're then on a red eye flight to Heathrow at six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, uh, with 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 members of the public in, in seats which are no doubt not suitable for basketball players who've just played that. And that I'm afraid it's it's it's. I'm not trying to get too much into the politics of it because it, 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 there are, as we all know, it's the equivalent of the Schleswig-Holstein question. You know, three people, three people who know what it was. And one's dead. One's forgotten. And the other one never knew what it was in the first place. Mm. That was Lord Palmerston, I think. Um, but it's just not on. Yeah. You know, it's not on. You, you, um, that and, you know, the, the decision about the under-20s, which we've just heard from Mark Stuttle, wasn't even communicated to him no. as an ex-under-20s coach. The fact that Mark is still the assistant coach is just yeah. a, it is a, no, it's a nonsense. Yeah. Um, it's not the same as Popovich. It's not the same as America because we're going to have the same team. Yeah. In Eurobasket, we're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is going to come in, 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 in the USA and coach a totally different team. That's yeah, two different exactly. teams. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The whole thing is, um, it, it's devoid of any noticeable logic. It's not giving our guys the best chance. It's storing up problems for the future, and it's far less than they all deserve. I'm delighted that at Newcastle we were able to give them at least a stage to play on. Yeah. And uh, I say that a little bit parochially, but if it had been at Leicester, I'd have said the same thing, or, mm. you know, wherever we got a gym, it would be the same thing. I'm delighted that we were able to fill the, fill the arena to make them feel valued, make them feel like, you know, there's somebody behind them, um, and, and get them in the hill and all of that stuff. I'm delighted we were able to do that. Um, but there needs to be more mm. um, to, to, to give them the best chance. They are not far away. No. They're not far away, but the, we're in that area where small margins and, Brailsford and his marginal gains and yeah, fluffy yeah, pillows yeah. and all that stuff, well, fluffy pillows and sorry, and injections <laughs> well, um, and all that stuff, you know, yeah. is going to make a substantial difference. And the guys who are working at GB, the coaches, the backroom staff, Chris Morris, all those guys, um, and I don't even, even the board, I'm sure they're doing what they can. And the, the, the reason is they don't, they don't, obviously we all know they don't have money from the government and money has to come from somewhere. Um, but, there needs to be, you know, there's some stamping of feet somewhere down the line. Mm. And I think hopefully the start, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but anybody hasn't watched the press conference after the Turkey game tonight, um, Sam Nieder asked a wonderful question about the under-20s. And I hope everybody goes and watches that. It'll be on the FIBA website. Mm. Just go and watch it. I hope that's a shot across bows mm. because it, it is utterly indescribable that we're basically thrown away four years of um, our under-16s to under-20s talent. Mm. Um, and we have because of the com- pandemic, guys haven't got to play under 18s. And now because of the, the decision not to run a program, um, even on a th- even on a shoestring, which no doubt Mark would know about because he ran it himself, um, it's been taken away from him. And they haven't even told the acting head coach about that mm. before putting it out on social media. 
that you know and you know that to me is just indescribable it's horrendous it it, it needs it suggests dysfunction it suggests that there are things which i'm not sure are going to be easily fixable um, and I get the money thing. I understand that, you know, it, it might be, oh, we can afford to run the 16s and the 18s, but not the 20s. We have to pick one of them. Why should the 16s leave out? There's no perfect solutions. I get that. And I understand that. But there are solutions if you work with people. If you look at all the commitment that these guys Well, that was the other thing. I, I, I forget who it was. Was it Jordan Williams? Somebody tweeted out, "What? what is the blockage here? Is there anything we can do? Yeah, well, well, clearly nobody's thought to ask them, no. and that, that and that is just and that you, you know that that's you know it's almost like back to um, the days of um, you know, the, the 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 cricket the the, um, the the MCC at Lords in the nineteen sixties and it's gentlemen and players you know yeah yeah and, and you know, we're in charge and you're the you're, you you be the serfs you just do what you're told yeah, you're yeah. about the right game off you go and you're playing go and play a game but you don't you don't actually have any say or any role and yet it's on these guys goodwill that everything is based because without yeah. their goodwill yeah, and, without exactly. their commitment, and without Ted Yorkrefor playing 51 games and then showing up with his name on the front, with his face on the front of the programme to play a game like he played on Friday night against yeah. the he played in saying, we're yeah. not going to lose this game. You know, he could, he's, he's, he's perfectly Doesn't entitled to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so... And, and the other thing is, I'm slight, and, and I know we said five minutes ago we won't get into the politics of it <laughs> um but I'm, I'm slightly minded reminded of glasgow uh whenever that was four four years ago and it's sort of like it, it's yeah. it's just frustrating that i mean i have no idea why dan clark turns up for 110 mm. caps to be honest with you i think it's i think it's an incredible credit to him the commitment that he's had because he's put up with more than most, I think, over the over the because he's been there, but he's put up with all of it. To be honest, having been there for for a hundred and hundred and ten caps, and it's yeah, just... and I, I agree with that absolutely, and it's you know just an incredible endorsement of him as an individual, but also his willingness to speak out. Yes, exactly. You know, and, and, That's and, why and, I was minded because he spoke out in Glasgow yeah, as, the, as well. He though. spoke out, and you know you've heard. Um, he spoke out again tonight. You've yeah. heard in previous press conferences, you've heard Gabe Olaseni speak out yeah. about um, the coach. You know, you, you, yeah. you've, you've clearly got an idea that these guys have got each other's backs. Yeah. And and what I don't think now, it may be a very clever, clever motivational ploy, which is, oh, you know, we'll get them all to hate us. And then we'll <laughs> right? But, and that might well be the way. Very it's clever. Done. I'm yeah. not in the locker room. I don't yeah, know if, yeah, if, yeah. Mark, if if it's kind of it's us against the world, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But why should it be? No. That's why? Should, and why? You know, and and this, you know, this ham-fisted decision might not even be the ham-fisted announcement of the decision. Yeah, yeah. In relation to and I don't sometimes think that because I've kind of an experience of administrating. I also have an experience of being in the locker room around players for ten or eleven years. And I don't necessarily, and I wouldn't have known when I was administrating or recruiting or anything like that, I wouldn't have known the kind of impact that something like that would have on players who've all played under 20s. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, and, and the way I find out about it, they would think, what the? Yeah. You know, really? And that can just not, you know, that can impact your mindset. And yeah. if your mindset is impacted, that can impact your performance. Yeah. Right? And, and, and I don't know if as I say, it's a little bit like, as I say, you know, you know, the bosses in the surfs almost. You, you, you just go and play and eat your pot noodles, whatever. Um, that's it. Pot noodles is a reference to the 1990s. It is. You have to be very old to get the you pot very old to understand. Yeah, I mean, yeah, England yeah. basketball team once that went across to somewhere in the Balkans. Russia, I think it was. Had to live, in, had to live off pot noodles and were told, they're yeah. fine, they're good for you. Yeah. We hear the microwave. Um, yeah. So it's not like this is new. Yeah. Um, but it's utterly frustrating when we saw you know some athletes at the 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 peak of their mental determination you know you know playing not for themselves but playing for their country something that we all want we all want to get better we've got 12 potentially 12 games if we're successful before the world cup mm. you know are they going to be flying out you know the, the greek team flew in on wednesday on a charter flight yeah you know they flew out immediately afterwards um, you know, on a charter flight. Now, I'm not saying we can get a charter flight to Turkey, you know, and clearly the money has to come from somewhere. And I, I get that. And if the money isn't there, the money isn't there. 
But what more do they have to do to persuade the people who are funding this that there's a realistic prospect of what is, in general sporting terms, a pit providing a pittance in getting um, and treating these guys properly and getting a successful result, something which could explode our game if we end up in the World Cup. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and we have a realistic chance. Well, b- before we go into oh, before we go into a seven hour uh, Sunday night breakdown, let's let's wrap yeah, this yeah. one up and, and, and move yeah, on. So um, Teddy, Teddy, if he, if he was the non shooter they were talking about, uh, yeah. seven of nine, four or four from three point range, and and nineteen points, pretty good for a non shooter. Who else um, made the threes? Yeah, no one. Everybody yeah. else made the threes and <laughs> balls out shooter, you know. So, uh, Tariq Phillip uh, with sixteen five and four. Uh, Gabe had thirteen and five. Nelson ten seven six. Yeah, Pretty impressive stat line. The other result uh, from from our group: Belarus eighty four, Turkey seventy, which was as probably as eye catching as as our uh, victory. Let's uh, let's move on to uh, the BBL then. Friday night back at at Newcastle and it and it should be said that's an incredible job to sell out two days in a row by the way I'll, I'll yeah, say it that, was, but... it was it was a good invite it was it was I mean I know the guys put a lot of work into that um and it was a different crowd it was a yeah. different crowd the second night as it was the first night it was more of a, a group crowd cheap t- tickets were slightly cheaper but basically apart from me everybody in there was paying yeah yeah you know yeah. so um both nights and that's yeah. the thing it is isn't we're not just grabbing kids off the street. They did let me in without paying off. Right? You, you were working. I wasn't. Um, technically, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, it was nice to go in there. And, and I hope it was good for the cameras. I haven't watched the game back off, the, off yeah. your telly. I haven't watched your commentary yeah. back. Uh, I don't know what you guys thought of the game. I know what I thought of it. But um, well, so, well, yeah, well that, that's what we're we'll here for. So I'm not. I'm not. So, yeah, so first on. of all, uh, Carl Williams back for, for Newcastle. Um, yeah. Uh, changes in the starting lineup uh, for Glasgow, uh, for Sheffield. A first start for Rodney Glasgow. Uh, yeah. Del Pesh, who's tended to come off the bench. I think he started three games before uh, before this one. In for, yeah. with Cook coming coming off the bench, and and Sheffield certainly uh, 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 were very comfortable with that lineup. They 18 points to eight. They went out. Rotino was hitting threes. Newcastle basically couldn't take anything away from them in the first first few minutes um, of the game. Yeah, and there's a starting lineup change for Newcastle as well, um, because Peel started mm. uh, in two previous games, albeit three weeks ago, which did one Defoe started. Um, but you're absolutely right. Um, I thought um, Sheffield had. A, I, I like that unit for Sheffield. Been talking a little bit earlier on this season about how I'm kind of slightly uncomfortable with Rotino playing the two. I don't think he's a, a, a nailed on two for this league. I think he's a three. Um, and that extra because he's a finisher, he's a guy who goes off one dribble, he's a guy who spots up, he's a guy who shoots. That shuttles Williams out of the starting lineup mm. um, and makes him into the sixth man. But I think as a group, it makes him incredibly much, much more cohesive, gives them two, two bona fide point guards, two bona fide shot creators, and it makes it difficult to pressure them in those circumstances. Um, that said, I was expecting Newcastle to be rusty, but I was expecting them to be rusty offensively. Mm. I didn't expect them to be rusty defensively. And I didn't think they were locked in at all. I mean, the first play of the game, um, the tip off. Yeah. Uh, you know, where literally. You know, well, we I'm got before it, it, it was one, I can't remember. I can't remember if it was Ant or, or Drew who said it was like, it almost felt like he'd gone the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. To lay it up because everybody else had sort of stopped there and gone, what's but, happening yeah. here? It's bog standard, you know, and, and it's, yeah. I thought when it was happening, because Corey Johnson was kind of fronting, almost fighting to get in front of the of um, whoever it was who made the layup. And Anderson. Um, Anderson, yeah. And I was thinking, well, hang on, there's meant to be a guy behind him. Yeah. You know, you always have you always have a, a backup, you always have a, a stopper yeah. protecting your own basket. It's just as a matter of course. And I wasn't. And I'm like, you know, and it happened and the game starts, everything moves on. But when you look back at that and you think, well, hang on, who... You know how locked in were they? How how you know who's communicating? Because the foes on the bench who's the one who would normally do it all. Um, so yeah, so so that and then yeah, the basically Sheffield got what they wanted in the first half. They knocked in the first quarter. They knocked down their shots, but they weren't shots that they were uncomfortable taking. And if there was any little bit of pressure on the um, 
perimeter, then you could then Delpesh would get position and you'd throw it in and you could take as long as he wanted and there was no one doubling down or swiping down at the ball. I just thought um, New, Newcastle were very, very passive. Mm. Um, very, very passive very early. And and it didn't actually, it didn't really stop until midway through the second quarter because, I mean, Sheffield had Sheffield had 40 points on the board in 15 minutes. They had 40 points on the board in 15 minutes and even the shots that they missed, they, I, looked, I looked down for halfway through the second quarter, I looked at the stats on my phone and I was looking for how many steals the Eagles had and I think it was one of more turnovers Sheffield had because I think I can't remember them turning the ball over, you know? And you've got a home crowd, you know, they want, the, the, the offence doesn't keep the crowd, it's a defence, you know, they, they're used to defence mm. and, and defence sets off, it sets you off running and, and dealing with it that way. And there was just nothing there. And that's the wrong, as I say, that is the wrong way around. The other thing is, Darius got two fouls. He came in and he got yeah. two fouls. The second yeah. one, he was the one who he played a bit of physical defence, but picked up a couple of fouls. The last one, I think, was him and Tuck going at each other again. Mm. Yeah. You know, he got that second foul. And he sat down the whole of the second quarter. So it was very passive basketball defensively. But they do have offensive shot makers, so they were able to stay in the game mm. as a result. Um, but the whole game, I think, and I'll just kind of jump ahead before you get to the, the, the facts of it. Um, I, I didn't. My word of this week is cussedness. Mm. You know, I, you know. I think you have, you have to have that. Those Brits would probably call it bloody mindedness, mm. cussedness, whatever, orneriness, just whatever. Um, Defoe's got it. Fletcher has it, but it hasn't really come out of him. It came out of him once in that game where he didn't get a call and he crossed over. The, and he looked at the ref, crossed over the guy, and drained the three. Yeah. You know, I was like, okay, you know, if you're not going to give me a call, I'll do it myself. Corey Johnson showed a little bit of it when he started picking up and trying to energize the team. But apart from that, I didn't see, I didn't see it. I didn't see any presence from the rest of the Eagles. That you know, they're getting that they might be getting their numbers, but it's different getting your numbers to having presence on the court to making plays which are going to change the game. Mm. And so I didn't see the cussedness that you need that perhaps um, I'm not sure Sheffield have got that much of it. But that's certainly that some of the, the, the Leicester guys have got some London guys have got some even you know some of the, some of the other teams as well. Um so yeah, so they got back to six at half time, but it was a it was a yeah, 12 of the last 16 points Newcastle scored in the first half, and then they scored the first bucket of the second half as well. And you were thinking, oh, Sheffield, as well as they'd dominated that first half, only up four. This this is Newcastle's time. And actually what happened was Sheffield went on a 10-2 run and went, went, went back out to a double-figure lead. Yeah, and the the game ultimately was determined by the way the two starting lineups played against each other at the beginning of the game, at the beginning of the third quarter. I didn't do the sums, but I guess would be it was plus 20 Sheffield. Yeah. On the runs. That's my guess. And that's very difficult to overcome it in anybody's gym. I think, you know, I, think, I think it's actually plus 22. I think it was 10 in the first and 12 in there. That's plus that 22. Third. What it was a nine-point game, you know. So and, and your starting lineups have dropped by 22. That means you got that means either Sheffield's starting lineup is playing out of this world, or, or, or Newcastle's starting lineup is just not doing what it's meant to do. And as I say, um, I get why they took Defoe out because they want to they want to kind of play the long game and they brought Peel in to be a starting fat, a starting player. Yeah, so yeah. that's his job. So I get that, but I don't think it necessarily helped them you know, set a tone in that game because when Defoe did come back in the game, he was kind of the one guy who yeah. showed a little bit of moxie. Well, he had that, he had the, the thing game. where he sort of like single-handedly dragging them, dragging back in. He had the, the hustle play, then dunks it. Uh, and, you know, everybody dunk, going nuts. Corner and, jump shots. Yeah. You know, and, and just, as I say, playing with that little bit of like, oh, look, come on, guys, this is going to be me. You know, somebody's got... You know, a little bit of leadership. He had 19 points in 17 minutes. And he's not a guy who, I think I said the last game, if they played at Plymouth, he had three points in 31 minutes, but they won yeah, by 20. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This game, he had 19 points in 17 minutes. So so this time they needed a bit of scoring and a little bit of that, and he gave them that. But the, there wasn't, and I think Johnson picked up a little bit, and Johnson picked it up, but um, they gave up some bad, they gave up some bad shots in the, in the third and the fourth quarter. And mm. um, they had a bit of momentum going into the third quarter, and then um, I think Kyle Williams gave Rotino a, a, an open three on the buzzer on the strong side, which you never do. That turned that turned a five point a five point and allowed Jim into an eight points and kind of mm, yeah slightly you flat. know that type of thing yeah. flat. And then um, again in, in Glasgow, Rod, Rod Glasgow played really well, but he made some shots that he's always going to make, mm. you know, off ball reversal and stuff like that, whereby they were a step slow. So I thought Sheffield Sheffield 
played like a team that had had two wallopins, um, that, that were always going to come back and play better. Um, Williams, I'm not sure what the what the score is with Williams. He's clearly a talented scorer, but I think he may be best in that sixth man role. Him and um, him in person really didn't play, really didn't do no, very much. Yeah. No, I know person's coming back off a dead leg, but mm. he kind of he, he was the eighth man off the bench for Newcastle, which kind of surprised the third man off the bench, which kind of surprised me. That must be something to do with his injury, I think. Uh, person's an enigma, he's kind of the one guy they've got to get going. Um, because you know, we know he can score, he had 36 in a game at Glasgow, he had 30 in another game, I think, this year. Um, but he never shot, I don't think he shot three in this game, you know, he's a, he's a shooter. So I think he only took he, two shots or something. Two yeah. shots, and so so you think, and so you know, he has to be, you know, he has to be their guy. He has to be a, a six, or if he's going to be a six man, he has to be coming off to score. You know, he has to be a guy who's going to score. And I'm not sure that they've got his role nailed down yet. Um, but yeah, Williams and Person are the, probably the two question marks around around those those teams at the moment. And then uh, Sheffield went back out to twelve. It's around the place you were just talking there. Glasgow making shots, Anderson as well and then Defoe again dragged his team back in it eight points in a row two and ones 77 81 it's getting loud and you think can they do this and then Anderson just hits a lovely shot at the top of the key yeah it was kind of what had happened and I watched that play I saw that play was in front of me in the crowd and basically um Anderson's go-to play is just to set somebody up on the left-hand side of the court and come around the screen to the foul line and pull up and shoot it Mm. Take what the defense gives you. In this game, um, Defoe was getting into it with I think Del Pesh at that time. Mm. Certainly one of them, either Del Pesh or Cook, whoever was in the game. And there was a bit of there'd been a bit of physicality going on in the last few or two, two or three times down the court. So when Anderson came off that screen, Defoe retreated back to put a body on whoever it was. I think it was Del Pesh. Mm. Instead of staying up there and taking that shot away, and Fletcher was saying to him after, "Get up." Get up! That he was involved in the in the mental battle with with Del Pesh, but Anderson has to knock down the shot, and he did. What I would say is, you don't want him coming off to his right. You want to try and get a top, on top of the screen and send him back the other way to his left at that point because he was able. He's a very controlled guard, Anderson. Mm. He doesn't ever appear to be un, un, under pressure. He doesn't ever mm. appear to be flustered. Um, he probably doesn't call his own number as much as he could, but yeah. I think he's one of those guys who likes to kind of leave it without calling his own number. So when it matters. He can. Yeah. That makes any sense. People aren't expecting I, I it. Was, yeah, no, I was impressed with the way he controlled the game. It, it, it's obviously different when you're sat courtside watching somebody for, for real than watching yeah. on, on, on the Agreed. BBL player that, as we do every week. So I, I really like the way he, and Glasgow as well, the way he yeah. controlled um, uh, the game. Uh, and then um, then he gets into a foul shot game and Sheffield always looked like they, they were going to win from from there in the last, I think, yeah, days. Newcastle had one shot. I didn't person stepped on the on the sideline, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Six point game, and you see, you're down six with forty seconds to go, and your shooter comes up on the base. It's coming out of a timeout as well. You've got to shoot it. Yeah. Okay, you've got to shoot it. You know, you need yeah. three. You're yeah. down six. The only way you're going back is two threes. You didn't shoot it. He stepped on. It. He was hesitant. He hesitated. Mm. So that's the thing. I mean, he's going to be on the court there. He's got to be willing to let it let it fly. So Defoe, uh, seven of nine, he was shooting for 19 points. Shelton, 14 points, 14 rebounds. Peel, uh, 12. Eagles, only four of 16 from three-point line. I thought Sheffield did a good job of not allowing the Sayers, the Johnsons, too many of the comfortable looks that they that they like. Yeah, to I have. think that's right. But I think I, I think it's a lot of that does. That's probably where they get the three weeks off lane. Mm. To be honest, because it's shot creation. You know, shot creation is about ball movement. It's about penetration. So get into your spots at the right time. You know, what Newcastle didn't get, which they could have got if they played in a defense, was the shots in transition. Mm. You know, you want to get threes in transition as well. The half court, the, the, you know, the basically even the threes that they got, you know, Corey Johnson pulled a couple of threes out of his backside. Yeah, he did. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know um, there weren't shots that they were creating, they weren't corner threes, they weren't particularly open looks. And um, that a little bit of that is timing, a little bit of that is personnel. I think in relation to some of those guys got very passive in that game. Mm. Um, and a little bit, a little bit, maybe roster construction, as I say, Fletcher is really the only real creator for anybody else at this point. So that might be an issue. 
So Sheffield were led by uh, Jordan Rotino's 22 points. He was 9 of 13, shooting 4 of 7 from behind the arc. Also 6 rebounds, 4 assists. Uh, I, was Glasgow... I, was, I was frustrated the way that they guarded Rotino. Yeah, they... Or didn't. And I, you know, I didn't go. I thought, I thought, you know, there's um, particularly in, in transition and stuff, you know, or in on rotations and ball, you know, you have to respect that guy. If he, he's going to kill you if you don't respect him. I didn't yeah. see his respect. And he did. Uh, Glasgow, 17 and 5 assists. Delpesh, 14 and 7. Let's go to the other game on uh, Friday night, which was the Leicester Riders, 90, sorry, Scorchers, 61. Darian Nelson-Henry was in uniform, but he didn't play. Uh, no Davis, no Hamrick. Uh, Gino Crandall hits two threes to start the game. Walker uh, knocks one down. It's 15 to 4. Uh, and I'm watching on Synergy, and I'm like, this. I'm, this is going on double speed. I know, I know what's coming. I don't, I don't need to, uh, I don't need to waste 40 minutes watching this when I can watch it in 20. I'm afraid I couldn't because it wasn't on the BBL player. Oh. I couldn't be bothered. I put the login to Synergy. I do have a login from Synergy for about three years ago, but it, that was one step too much for my interest on this game. I had a quick look yeah. at the stat sheet. I had a look at the way the game set out. But, you know, sorry, our four players down from three weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. You know, from Lawrence Gill, Chris Hamrick and Davis. You know, that was half their, that is half their team, uh, as it was in, in October. And to then to get the, the schedule, which means you've got to go and play that stuff for the third time in there. In yeah. um, it, it was difficult to see it going Cause, any Because the other thing was, actually, in the first half, Leicester got a ton of really good looks. And apart from Crandall, Missed them all. They were just so it was one of those where it was ten points at halftime. Could have been thirty. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's all I've got to say, really. So, uh, so did you see? The, so the, nothing happened James in this had, game. James had about. Was that a yeah. start, that your platinum of the week? Or no, no, no. I was going to, um, I was going to spin it down. Did you see the entertainment at the end? I actually didn't even get to that, and you told us Did about it. I should yeah. do, but I gather um, they had a bit of a yeah, Creole. So there was a bit of a, a to opinion. do at the end. Um, Leicester had the ball. Uh, it was inside the last 30 seconds. The shot clock was still on. There wasn't much of a difference between games. It was like four seconds or three seconds between shot and game. So Leicester were going to have to shoot it anyway. Um, and Duku is 25, 26 feet from basket and just jacks up a three that goes in. And Creon's arms out, not happy. but. They had to shoot it because yeah, exactly. because the shot clock was still on. They didn't have to shoot it at that point. Normally, you would just dribble it down and jack up a three on the buzzer. But Nduku's out there. Why can't he shoot the ball? I, I didn't have a problem with that at all. Um, and then and then um, they come the other way. Kalen's pushing it really, really quickly. Connor gets in front of him. Is it is it a push-off? Probably. But it, right. So knocks him to the ground. Um, and offensive foul is called. Creon's not happy. He's going on. Rob, who's slightly off screen, you can't really can't really see it. He's obviously saying some, something back. And then mm. there's the coming together. And again, it's not all very clear on 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 those cameras. Mm. But obviously, yeah. some discussion being had either way. And it's it's a technical foul for for both of them. And then that's just you know, about the ball and let time expire, sort of thing. Yeah, well, there's two things that come into something like that. Firstly, there's the frustration of losing. Yeah. He's, you know, Creon's a proud coach. Yeah, you know, yeah, all these yeah. guys are proud coaches. And if you're losing, in, you're losing in a way where you know it's not really a fair fight because yeah. you haven't got what you what you thought you had, you know, then that can um, that can be jarring and that can wind you up. And it's, it's sometimes it's difficult to kind of just take it on the chin and just, just walk yeah. out the building. Um, the second thing is it's a very... It's it's one of these gray these kind of British gray areas, isn't it? Yeah. The right thing to do, the wrong thing to do. Maya, I ne I never had an issue with somebody shooting the basketball if they had to shoot it. Yeah, never had an issue with that. We didn't always do that. Sometimes we just dribble a ball and put it down. There's three seconds to go, and then they, yeah. they have the ball, and then we, we're not going to. Ever since I think I've told this story before. Ever since the season that we won all four, Andre Jones did his hamstring. Going yeah. for a layup in the last second of a game, yeah, when yeah, yeah, yeah. Crystal, you know. So it's always been you know, just put it down. Let's get out of here. We don't need to. But if someone wants to shoot it, if you have got young kids in the game, you know why not? And not that's never been a problem. It's a pro it's always been a bit of a problem for me if you don't have to shoot it. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah. yeah. If you don't, have to but shoot say, it, the shot clock was on, right. so that so they yeah. were going to have to shoot it. It just it was one of those. It it, it looked unexpected. 
But he ha they were going to have to shoot at some point. Why can't and do can shoot when he's got yeah, the ball? But this is also, you know, this is a little bit about that cussedness I was talking about, you know. Yeah. Just like, you know, it'd be easy for, you know, if Creon's not very happy, it'd be easy for Rob just to say, I'll oh, sit down, one by 30. But Rob's going to come back with, you yeah. know, because yeah. uh, I've been around a guy like that, you know, because yeah. you have to, you, 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 you have to, whatever mean, whatever happens, you're trying to create a culture like, where you're fighting your corner. Yeah. And you're fighting your guy's corner and your guys understand that. Yeah. Um, and because again, the other thing is, by the by that point, Surrey didn't have to attack. I know when you're losing, uh, you lose it, it looks better yeah. if you go for it. And you Connor get numbers, could, man. You get, your down, you get your numbers. Yeah. You get a quick so light, you know, it's you all, it's, average fifteen a game instead of twelve again, a game. You get your job. But it's it's all those things that all of those things didn't really need to happen, but yeah, because yeah. they did, it, it gave. It, well, it you, was the most exciting bit of the game. It was I didn't watch the game. You fast yeah. forward it, so I can't yeah, even yeah. say if it was a yeah. chippy game or not. It might have been a chippy game. Who knows? Um, it's so, the third time they did each other, so maybe they were a bit chippy. There was another. Know. There was another technical which was on the Surrey bench, but I couldn't quite work it out because when I saw that, I thought, oh, "Why then, Creon didn't get ejected?" But it was uh, um, uh, Mark. I think it said it was clearly signaled to be on the bench. It must have been somebody. But I don't get that. that. I mean, I, I, as a as a as a fan, I never got as a coach. I never really got. It seems to me that bench bench tech should be assessed to the coach. I never understood. Well, they why are. It is, and the, 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 you get an extra one of them. Is, is yeah, I know, I know. I know. It just seems a bit weird, but never mind. So uh, Gina Crandall, twenty uh, four points, five of seven for three, nine assists, thirty five index. Walker, fourteen. Washington, four of seven from three point lands for fourteen. Uh, Leicester, despite being pretty horrendous three-point shooting apart from Crandall in the first half ended up 12 of 31. Uh, McNamore 14 and 6. Um, Teo Ogundegby 13, the only players in double figures. Yeah, well, the biggest um, the, big, the biggest number in all of that is Crandall 5 or 7 from the three-point lane because if his three-point shooting kind of keeps up towards 40%, he's unguardable. Everyone's in trouble. Yeah. Everyone's in trouble. And he is shooting more this year. He is definitely shooting the ball more. I don't know if he watches but he's definitely shooting the ball, shooting more threes. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. And um, I think he has to. That, that's his next um, kind of development. He has to. So let's move on to uh, Sunday's games, and we'll start um, as as uh, as the Sheffield game was forty five minutes late tipping off. We'll start with the with the earlier of the two. Games, yeah, just thank the referees for that. Yeah, that was good. That was helpful yeah. to us, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, whether so, it's so yeah. we. Uh, um, we were well i say we were able to uh turkey 84 great britain 67 um for the turks um shane larkin and uh Mamatoglu, um who were playing uh your league in the uh, uh at, on, at the end of the week for the first game um they were out interestingly um sanley was not released by barcelona so he wasn't there i'm not quite sure a, if you're allowed to do that, and B, what the what the thing is behind that. Well, my understanding is that the, the Euroleague is... You have by, to, yeah. Well, but, Euro, Euroleague is basically a rule to itself, isn't it? Well, there is that. You know, uh, and, the, the, but... but and They don't have to release them for Thursday. Why, do they, why would they have to release them for Sunday? Well, because they're not playing. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I, know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know what it is. But anyway, more politics actually. There's a yeah, lot of power. It is. I'm not. On. I'm not even getting involved in that. So two of the three Euroleague players that they could have added to their team, they they were able to add. Um, and then uh, Nelson, obviously out for 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 Great Britain. Now I uh, I spent this afternoon uh, sitting outside watching snow come down. Apparently they were playing football, but I couldn't quite see it. Um, so I so I missed the I missed the uh, the good bit of this for 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 GB. I got when I got in, it was a tied ball game. But 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 tell me about how Great Britain got twenty three ten up after seven minutes. Well, they played great. Um, but the um, but you, the point you made there, and I, when I read about it this morning, you know the, the dread. You had a little sense of dread in relation to when Nelson wasn't playing. Mm. Um, and that's not because the rest of those guys can't play, but it's because of the the role that he plays within that team. Um, and we know he made the he made the layup in Montenegro, didn't he, to to mm, put us into yeah, the Eurobasket. Yeah. Remember that in the last second, he got the ball. He was the guy in Newcastle at the end of the game. He got the ball. He has this ability to kind of athleticism to kind of create his own shot, which nobody else in the group necessarily does. Maybe Philip does a little bit. Um, but what it meant was that Philip moved into the starting lineup. 
end. So we've got this starting lineup with um, Teddy running the team, but Tariq, Ben Mockford, Space in the Court, Dan Clark, and Gabe Alassane. And Gabe Alassane's obviously played in Turkey a lot, and Tariq's played in Turkey a lot. And Turkey were really discombobulated at the beginning of the game. You know, they're, they're integrating new players. They haven't got the continuity, I don't think, that we had. And um, we got into them. You know, um, Ben Mockford made a ridiculous three coming off the screen. Dan Clark made a corner three. Um, we split them apart. The five guys that we had on court um, looked like a really, really um, impressive unit, that unit, both offensively and defensively. We got some trade, got some runouts, got a couple of steals because they were off of it and made some shots. And I think made three of our first four threes. But at some point, you've got a sub, you know? And um, the, the, the problem with having Nelson not playing means you don't have Philip to come off the bench. Mm. And you really don't have anybody else like Philip to come off the bench. Because the guy who's coming off the bench is... Um, because we're committed to playing three guards, basically, because we have to be. Because we're there, that's where our shooter... We need shooters on the court, yeah? But we're one guard down... Um, Jacob Round realistically is not going to play. Um, that leaves the only other guard is Dwayne Lautier or Gunley. Mm. Um, but that's not the same as Tarek Phillip. He's a totally different type of player. He's, a, he's more of a, a wing, kind of a, a aggressive, offensive, rebounding athlete, you know, going up and down. Um, so we end up with guys either having to play tired through that, and also not having the benefit of the continuity and the chemistry that that five had for the first seven minutes. Ashley Hamilton had to, came in the game. He struggled initially for his first couple of plays, travelled, um, missed somebody on the screen and rode defensively. And we didn't collapse, but we just couldn't get any looks, yeah. you know? And and because of that, they were able to kind of chip away. Yeah. And and they were going to get better. Let's be yeah. honest, they're good. You know, I mean, to take up our, our one kind of, you know, high level France pro A player and and um and have them produce a Euroleague MVP. Yeah. Yeah. Out of Miami. Yeah. And, and <laughs> Istanbul, apparently. Um, fair, he's been in Istanbul a fair fair while. Yeah, yes. sure. He has been paid well enough to be there too. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, um to, to produce that, you know, and is is difficult. And then you throw in the pressure that they're under. Then yeah. my, my thought when we went 23-10 up was it, it was pretty awful, really, but it was great. We're not going to get blown out. Yeah. You know, I thought, I thought, my God, we're actually playing really, really well. Mm. But it was difficult to see how it was sustainable. And um, Bigby Williams came on. He played a minute and a half. He wasn't playable. Mm. Um, you know, he wasn't, he's not up to the speed of what that group is doing. I'm not, I don't know how he's doing domestically, but he played a minute and a half and he didn't come back. Um, which meant that, you know, we were riding. And it was a game whereby they have such size that we're riding Dan Clark a lot. Mm. Because it's not like the Greeks. You can't really play um, that many minutes with um, with Hamilton and, and, and Jordan Williams and those guys because of the size that they have. Yeah. You know, they're different. They're, 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 you know, they're, every time I look, there seems to be a different six-foot-ten guy on the court. Yeah. And they're just collecting fouls. Yeah. You know, but uh, they're collecting fouls. But we're, we've got basically two guys who are, Six nine and above and playable, and that's mm. Clark and Olaseni, mm. um, and everybody else is slightly undersized. So we got some decent minutes out of. Um, we kind of hung around, did all right because we managed mm. to get the starting unit back in, and that starting well, unit was a bit more scoring. So, so they came back into it. Obviously, uh, Borahan Tonchar and uh, Matadam uh cut it uh, down to a two point game early oh, in the in the second quarter. Fantastic Turkish pronunciation. Sorry, well, I, I've covered both. Almost of like those you're guys. a pro. I've covered both of those guys. So that, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then and then it's pretty tight for the remainder of the first half, and there it's thirty seven points a piece at halftime. And Mark Woods put a tweet out. I, I didn't get a chance to check it, but he said that the. GB starters were plus 26 and the bench was minus 26 in the first that half. Might be, that might not, I don't, oh, that would be the, the kind of combined plus minus. Combined, yeah. Yeah, I assumed it was like if you added them all up. Yeah, yeah. Added them all up. So in reality, yeah. it's probably, you know, the starters would have been, yeah, starters probably been about plus 12, plus 13 as a group. Yeah. I would yeah. suggest. Um, 
But yeah, but the, the problem is that you know your bench has been run with by by Tariq Phillip, and he's not on the bench anymore. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's the thing about the depth of all of this, you know, and that's why it was such an impossible impossible task because you know we, you can win a quarter playing great basketball basketball and playing really well and, and sticking to your scout report and, and getting in the way of the opposition and doing things that you don't want to do and they get a bit tight but that's one of those things that you know in the NBA 48 minute games generally the talent wins at the end yeah when they can produce Shane Larkin and we, we yeah. end up matched up with he's so matched up with the, Wade, the, you know? yeah exactly there was uh, it was one of those where you just go wow that is that is you know tough yeah. Um, and, and the start of the the start of the second half, they they went on a seventeen five run. Larkin was basically pulling the strings. He was hitting shots. He was finding people, um, and they are twelve points up. And you're just like, that's yeah, it. yeah. You're thinking it's that's the way it's going, and and it's going that way. You saw a little bit of fatigue creeping in. Mm. Um, as I say, you know, we we didn't have the either the effective size on the bench to throw bodies at them, you know, to take fouls or necessarily as much shot creation as we needed. I thought our spacing was really good. I thought we run what we were meant to run. And I thought we played hard all the way. Um, but I thought we outmatched. Um, yeah. But then, even then, you know, I went off for my Sunday dinner with about two minutes to go in the third quarter. Mm. And it's not good form to have the phone at the table. Mm. So, um I didn't. I came back with like two minutes to go. On the, two minutes gone in the fourth quarter because I obviously I ate quickly when there's a game on. Yeah. And yeah, um, yeah. and um, it was only an eight point game. Yeah. So, well, Philip hit a couple of threes. That may be uh, why they, they got it down to six uh, at the end of the at the end of the third quarter. But then, uh, then they pulled away again. Hazelbert and Larkin hit threes, and it, it was it was out to nineteen. And 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 at the end of the day. We the British fans got to if you don't watch your league, you won't see Shane uh, Larkin every Larkin. week. You got to see, you know, one of the best players in Europe, and and yeah. and why he is one of the best players in Europe. It was um, smacks of Boomer Caleb. Yeah, Boomer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Boomer yeah. Caleb, I'm not playing that, that well-known Macedonian. Macedonian. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, and and I mean he did. I mean he made a couple of threes. He. You know, he was playing with um, Lautio Gunley because, you know, it's just not somebody with the level of quickness and understanding. And he made sure he clocked him on the face as well, just for good measure. <laughs> um, and I, I was pretty, I think, I think that's a pretty darn good weekend. Yeah. Week, sorry, pretty darn good week to have beaten the Greeks and lost to the Turks. We have to hope that we can beat the Belarusians, Yeah, you know. Um, at least once, certainly win the head-to-head, -head, hopefully twice. Um, I don't think Turkey coming off a loss and throwing that talent, I mean, looking at that arena, you know, puts kind of the Virtue Motors arena. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything. I've, been, I've, I've, been, I've actually been result. to the Sinan Erdem Dome. It is an impressive place inside. You know, and it, it just kind of, I don't think, I, I saw nothing for our players to be um, upset about or to feel like they let anybody down. Mm. Uh, I just don't think they were. I think ultimately we're missing. If you miss what we ha what we have, and then you throw in what they went through on Thursday night to come back and the emotion of that, mm. and then you add in um, Luke Nelson not being there as being one of the probably the two most important players in our team. Luke Nelson mm. and Gabe Olseni can't really split them. Um, or two most two least replaceable players in our yeah. team. Yeah, the yeah. most least replaceable. Um, and take, take into account that you, you, you don't have Hessen and Soko, um, then hopefully we can get we can get at least one of them back um, for the future windows. But you know I think we've done pretty pretty darn well, and you know we have to think that we've got a realistic prospect of qualifying, and I just hope that they get the support mm. um, to do that. And you know as I say in in sports terms, the money that we're talking is a pittance. Yeah, um, you know it really is just to run uh, two, the third of a billion that we spend on on Olympic uh, per Olympic cycle. It's yeah, you know, I mean it's just like, the edges it's like a couple of rowers and you know yeah. get our get yeah. our team a first class flight. Yeah. Um yeah. yeah they probably can't say that they, they can do they can do it with six instead of eight, can't they? The yeah. uh so uh Larkin had 22 points, seven of ten shooting, eight assists, 30 efficiency rating. Uh Tuncha had 17 points, 12 assists. Uh, Clark led Great Britain with 17, Olaseni 15 and 9, and, and Philip 14 points and, and 7 assists. I just um, think that was a game that Dan Clark played, and Dan Clark really played incredibly well mm. in that basketball game. 
because um, they need, he was so important. You know, he's our only guy who's above 6'10", because he's taller than all of us. Uh, he can stretch the floor, he can shoot, he can defend. He had to play big minutes. He's, what, 33 years of age. He's playing, you know, he's probably... And, you know, there might be people saying, oh, why didn't, you know, Hamilton play more? Why didn't John Williams play more? That game, it, it had to be, you know, the way Dan Clark was playing, it had to be Dan Clark. And um, I thought, he, I just thought, I thought he was really, really good. Mm. Um, and, you know, this isn't soft soaping. I don't know these guys. Um, I'm not I'm not trying to curry favour with them at all. And you might be listening to this thing, you know, where they lost by 17, what's but crap's he talking, they're not very good. All that stuff, you know, I mean, you have to have a, an appreciation of and what they were going into and the circumstances, what they were going into and what they were up against. Mm. And to be tied at half time was a major accomplishment and with a little bit more depth, uh, playable depth, then um, that we may have been closer at the end. Mm. But it doesn't, you know, ultimately, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, any team, nobody in that group um, is going to go into Turkey on a Sunday with the EuroLeague guys playing and winning that arena. Mm. You know, you might get them on a Thursday night. You might have a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. on a Sunday, uh, you know, yeah. um, when uh, they need to win. So, that's the, you know. the nature and then of it, had all it? the all the stuff about the under twenties afterwards. But I've said, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that. yeah. So let's go on to the final game of the evening. And rather helpfully, I've not written the score down. I think it was seventy-two eighty. Uh, yeah, Sheffield yeah. Sharks against the uh, eight points as opposed to nine, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Yes, Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't really matter, would it? Wouldn't really matter to anybody that same with 17 instead of 18. Um, <laughs> the uh, the um, Sharks, unbelievable in the first uh, three or four minutes. They were 10 of 11 for the floor from the floor. They went out 15 4. They ended up 23 13 up, having made 10 of their first 11 shots. Yeah, I <laughs> used to have a bit of pet hate of me when you had to hang around for games to start. Yeah, yeah. absolute pet hate. You, 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 all these teams have this, um, you know, very, very carefully calibrated pre-game routine as to when they go in, when they come out, how long they're going to have, what time the introductions are, all of that stuff, you know. And um, and because it's snowing a bit in South Yorkshire, and a couple of the refs can't quite get to there. Be, to be fair, I think it was snowing a lot by yeah, the, by, right. by the, from what Philip Brown was saying, it was snowing yeah, yeah. a lot. Uh, well, anyway, it, it is helpful for us because I mean, we could watch the GP. Well, yeah, yeah, being yeah. we are being conflicted yeah. in any way because. And, and I got home through the snow, having sat in the snow. What? I mean, but, you know, this game shouldn't have been played at the same time as the GP game. I'm, yeah. I'm not. I'm, I'm, honest, I'm not going to. I'm going to wind up anybody from the BBL or, or whatever. But no, no, I shouldn't. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm not across the argument that we shouldn't have any games at all because I don't think the, the, um, the press interest in the in the two are mutually exclusive. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't think it really makes any blind bit of difference. I think the more basketball we have, the better, the more we can build a narrative. Um, but I don't agree that we should be tipping off games at the same time as the national teams being the World Cup qualifier. Mm. Um, but there we go. Um, but it, unfortunately, it didn't tip off at the same time. It tipped off three quarters now there because it was snowy. So Leicester were probably kind of hanging around a little bit waiting. In my experience, that always benefits the home team. Mm. Because even that when you get to the gym will be calibrated, you know, you get to the end, you get to the gym about two hours. I presume before. Leicester must have got there later than they would have anticipated as well. You don't know. I don't know. I don't know. All I can tell is from those tweets where they show photographs of a bloke getting off a bus. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Say, it's not not I am not want to talk about content, but it never thrills me. Um nice jacket, so maybe there's a sponsor in it. Um anyway, yeah, so so they weren't um I don't, it always favours the home team in my experience. I don't know why it does, but it always does. Um, and Sheffield's start on five is incre incredibly cohesive, as we saw on Friday night. You know, they're really they play with, they're playing with the pace and the speed about them and understanding it and kind of synergy. And, and Glasgow kind of helps with that. Um, but I thought All their game, starters were in double figures, by the yeah, way. I thought this game turned on, I thought Sheffield's got a little bit not happy early, but I thought they lost the their attention to detail defensively and what turned what could have been a you know because of that start what could have been a 15 16 point game ended up being a three or four point game yeah. and when i talk about their attention to detail defensively particularly i'm talking about loving loving yeah. the, you, know, you, you know the 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 guy is the guy won this game for leicester because he had 23 points on 10 shots mm. compared to anybody else 
if you look at the numbers and the rest of everybody else, there's nothing close to that. Mm. But Walker he had 17 on 10 shots. 17 on 10 shots, but yeah, yeah. okay, but I'll, Walker's scoring in the paint. Yeah, yeah. No, you, know, you just said there was nobody close, and I thought, well... 17 on 10, but it's 1.7, and 23 on 10 is 2.3. It's not close. Anyway, <laughs> um, it's, it's, yeah. but primarily it was him. And the, the reason, the, the reason, to be honest, I suppose the reason I'm saying the, that... The, the reality was, they were, they, they were 10 points down, and he hits two threes and then gets fouled on one and makes all three free throws, and they were, yeah. they were, they were four points down when they should have been 10, 12, 14 points down, given how Shefford had survived. The point you make about Walker is a good one, but I suppose what point I'm making is living is preventable. Walker is not necessarily preventable. Mm. Walker is going to get his, get his rebounds. He's going to get a couple of balls down, a couple of post-ups down close, um, whereby he's going to be affected. He's going to get fouled. Mm. You don't expect a three-point shoot. A guy who basically doesn't, step, doesn't spend much time inside the three-point line to go for 23 points off 10 shots. You just mm. don't. You know, because it's a, he, the vast majority of his shooting is catch and shoot. Mm. Now, to catch and shoot, that means somebody's not guarding him the way that they should be. And he is the one guy on that team, him and Connor, but but the start of the game, because he's the only one on the court. Mm. He is the one guy on that team because Crandall knows where he is. Crandall knows that he's a shooter. Crandall knows that he's generally, he's generally deep in the corner. And Gino's just stretching him out and drawing people away from it. And I thought um, Sheffield didn't show him any degree of respect at all. I thought they helped off him far too much, Nichols in particular, on a couple of occasions, and he killed them. And those shots, which are kind of Leicester's most basic offense, it's a, you know, it's about it's a two-man game. It doesn't, they might not be close to each other, but it's a two-man game. It's Crandall coming off a screen and looking for loving. He's not getting the ball off three or four rotations and they're all scrambling out. He's getting the first pass. Mm. And you've got to take those shots away and you've got to make loving dribble because he doesn't really want to dribble. He can, but that's not how he's going to score 23 points off 10 shots. Mm. And they didn't do that. And that gave Leicester momentum. And once it became a dogfight, it was Leicester's game. Once it was a, a running match, it was Sheffield's game. Mm. Um, and, and like all games, it went back and forward a little bit. Mm. But you always felt that um, Leicester had a little bit more capability to get good shots at the rim. Well, Sheffield did get back out to 12 in the second quarter. Mackenzie and Crandall hit threes. Walker had six points. A 19-2 run by Leicester over five minutes put them in front. And then, as you say, it sort of went back. Sheffield hit seven in a row in the third quarter to lead by six. Loving hit another couple of threes to put Leicester up. So let's spin it to the fourth quarter. Well, Sheffield's um, missing just at the end of the third quarter. I thought Cork missed, missed a couple of chippies and turned one over. And, and they just didn't have that same kind of that same kind of bounce that comes. I also thought, thought Leicester started guarding a lot better. They guarded the guards a lot better. Not Anderson is tough, but they guarded Glasgow a lot better in the um because he got going early and he, he has this kind of tricky little one one dribble pull up, mm. and then which you think that's a bad shot and it goes in. Yeah, and I think they figured that out and they started defending him a little bit more aggressively in relation to that, which took away the guard scoring a bit and went and then the bigs didn't finish. But go on, sorry. Yeah, so it's, and well, we're just getting to, getting to the end because it because it was a tight game, really. It, yeah. it, there are runs either way, but there's, there's not much in it. And with three and a half minutes to go, it's a it's a one point Leicester lead, and then Riders with the next seven points of the game to 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 see at home. And they, again, it's it, that's Geno time, really, isn't it? It was, but it was also the other, the other end because the, Sheffield got some decent looks, but you know Nichols missed Nichols rimmed a three. Um, I think Anderson drove and, and maybe blocked on one occasion, and Leicester were able to get stops. Um, Sheffield didn't give up anything easy, um, particularly easy. I think Crandall went down the middle on one occasion, but you feel comfortable if you're Leicester with the ball in his hands that like you're going to get, you know, a decent shot at the end. Now. Sheffield did a good job in this game of kind of making Crandall into a scorer because he was seven of 19. He had 19 shots, you know, and that's, that's, that's actually the way you want him to be because, but if you, but Loving had 10 shots, you know, you know, and, and the 10, and they're all off Crandall's passes. He had nine assists as well. So I'm not sure if they did that deliberately or whether it was just Crandall being more aggressive and, and trying to be a scorer, yeah. but kind of as the, as the game goes on, Leicester's offense simplifies, ball doesn't move as much but the decisions are all being made by the chief decision maker. You know, you almost don't want him to give the ball up in case he doesn't get it back. And um, he has this ability to get to the rim. 
you know, or to draw contact, which means that they're getting decent looks. Now, Walker's also rejuvenated. He made some big plays down the end, um, which is very, very important for them whilst they're missing Nelson Henry. But this was a separation game for Leicester because mm. it gives Sheffield three losses and it gives Leicester none, you know, as opposed to giving Sheffield two losses and Leicester having one. So it's a real separation game. It's kind of the kind of game where you need that word again, that cussedness to win the league, yeah. win that game. Um, because one win now is as important as one win in April. Mm. So um, it was a massive win. I think that Sheffield kind of blew themselves out a little bit. And also, they, they, you know, they, they have to play a better defensive game to beat Leicester. You've got to be pretty good defensively to beat Leicester. And you've got to really focus on where you want the shots to come from. If you're not focused on that and you're not giving open shots, to the, if you're giving open shots to the right guys, um, or to the wrong guys, then you're going to lose even if you're scoring at the other end, because eventually Leicester have another gear to go to with their length and their defence. And they bring Connor off the bench, which helps. And they bring a McKenzie as well, which helps with their energy off the bench. Um, so I just thought, yeah, the, the, the rhythm of the game was Leicester's once it slowed down. Uh, so basically, it was free throws shooting at the end. Um, I, yeah. I, feel, I feel somewhat obliged to ask you, because because he gave us a shout out on commentary. Um, I wasn't listening to be honest. Uh, oh dear, sorry, I'd be no, very disappointed. Um, I know. Uh, uh, Philip Brown, um, the the advancing of the ball out of the timeout. I can't remember exactly how many seconds there were left. It was less than nineteen, but they didn't say. I don't think. Right. Um, and Leicester were up six, and it's that question of uh, Glasgow had a, Glasgow had airballed a shot, so you wouldn't be able to run the baseline. But whether you advance the ball to Give yourself yeah, more points. You, you absolutely do because when you're up by that far, you're a two possession game. The only thing that you can, the only thing that can lose you the basketball game is if you turn the ball under under your own which, basket. Yeah, but they almost turned the ball over on the long pass to the corner, which if Connor hadn't got to and put the brakes on and got a foul they from did, behind. But, but then you, the worst case is then you're setting up your defense. Yeah, yeah. That's the point. You're setting up your defence and you're still up six. The worst case is you throw the ball off under your own basket or half your guys are down the court. It gets stolen, thrown out for a quick three, bang, it's a three-point game, a one-shot game, and then the game, then you've got to make foul shots again. Mm. So uh, I'm a great, yeah, if you are up by anything more than, if you're two possessions in the, two possessions up, you know, then you have to try and you have to advance the basketball, I think. Mm. I just think you, you just have to get it out of away from your own basket because the only thing you're trying to avoid is quick scores by the opposition. Yeah. You know, even if you have to take a five second violation, you should get back, you set your defense up. So uh, Anderson, a three of 12 for his 14 uh, points. Sheffield, this was the, the stat I wanted to pull out. Um, uh, 26 of 64 shooting, which bearing in mind they were 10 of their first 11, leaves them 16 of 53 over the course of about 36 minutes, 35 minutes. I think they're big enough to score. You see, they got they got going early, but their the, the kind of guards got them going early. Mm. And I think when the game slows down, the bigs have to score. And at times, Cook and Dalpesh can be hit or miss. Um, so, you know, you'd expect them because they're the ones who, you know, catching the ball four or five feet away from the basket. So they shouldn't be part of any group which is shooting 16 or 51. Mm. You know, because they, you know, they should be shooting chippies. Um Jump shots. I just think I think Leicester have an ability to extend the defense, so and particularly with um, guys that they, they they bring in, and um, they did that. I think they, they have that. I say they have that cussedness. They take the challenge. Mm. There's a challenge there. They gave up 30 points in the first quarter. They gave up 42 the rest of the way. Mm. You know, and we know the numbers about 95. You know, if yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, we know the numbers, and they know the numbers. So you know that is that's not luck. That that comes from. Um, Taking up the challenge as a team of saying, hang on a minute, we can't be giving up 30 points for anybody. And also Sheffield going just a little bit cold and just a little bit, uh, no, I'm not saying lackadaisical, but just, uh, I think it all starts with your defence. And I thought their defensive, their attention to detail defensively let Leicester in the game. Once you give Leicester a sniff, you're in a dogfight. And to you to continue the K9 analogies, um, Cruella Rob is going to take you away. Mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, that's that's bullshit. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> apologies. We'll finish that. 
the uh it, it's the yeah. down is marked not for kids on youtube so we're all right, That's uh, all right. <laughs> loving with 23 points four of seven for three um gino crandall with 20 points six rebounds nine assists mo walker seven of ten for his 17 uh points only 12 points off the bench for leicester um which is, yeah, but they're a bit short because Adekai yeah. got into foul trouble. So Adekai yeah. only played about eight minutes. Yeah. He struggled with the size, but you've got those fouls to give, which is helpful. And as I say, Crandall monopolised a lot of shots in this game. So there wasn't many shots with McKenzie or Washington, who were the other two guys off the bench, which is why I think you have to play Leicester to that way. You know, you, you don't want Gino shooting out nine shots and everybody else, you know, getting spoon fed by him because you're going to lose. Mm. Um, you prefer to have him bouncing the ball a lot. Having to put up tough shots, he's going to make some, he's going to miss some, but the other guys are going to end up being reduced to bystanders. And they did that half well, or maybe that's the way Gino played it, but what they didn't do was take it loving away. And that's mm. just, just in, 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 it's like that. It's Dan Clark. You just can't, you know, it's the first thing on the first thing in big letters on the scouting report, underlined in italics, bold print. <laughs> So that will do us uh, for this week. And uh, scheduling note, um, I'm going to a wedding next Sunday. So we're going to uh, bump it back to Monday night breakdown for, for next week, for, for one week only, we hope. Um, uh, so just keep an eye out for that. But for now, Dave and I will say goodbye. Have a great week and we will see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.